Uh, so good afternoon. We are so glad to have you here with us, joining us for this live webinar on meal planning, making it manageable, presented by our own Angie Marat. She's a patient educator with the Cancer Education Program in Rochester, Minnesota. Angie has her master's degree in public health education, and she has been a registered dietitian for over 20 years, seven of those years with Mayo Clinic. I'm Janine Kokel, another patient educator with the Mayo Clinic Cancer Education Program, and I will be moderating today's session. We want people on the webinar to know that this session will be recorded so individuals who are not able to join us for the live session can watch it at a later date. For those of you who would also like to review this re recording or webinar again, the recording takes about three days for it to be turned around, edited, and then put back on the video library tab on our cancer education group on Mayo Clinic Connect. Mayo Clinic Connect is a digital platform where patients, family members, and caregivers can connect with each other, get evidence-based information, and really get access to information about the classes that we offer uh, digitally and in person at the Mayo Clinic Cancer Education Center. We encourage you to follow and like the Cancer Education blog on Mayo Clinic Connect so you can stay up to date on upcoming webinars and other educational opportunities that we hold. We will put the link to the Mayo Clinic Connect Education blog in the chat function. In just a moment, I'll do that. I would like to just quickly take a moment to tell you about some of our upcoming webinars in February and March. The topics are including the first, February, first Thursday in February, the role of palliative care for patients with cancer is presented by Dr. Taylor, who is a palliative care physician at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida. The following three Wednesdays in a row in February, we will be offering a webinar series on financial toxicity, managing the cost of cancer care. That will, those sessions will be presented by a Mayo Clinic patient navigator and an oncology social worker. The first Wednesday in March, we will have Cancer and Stress presented by Dr. Jane Kirsch. She's a fellow in the Department of Psychology at Mayo Clinic. Just want a reminder to go ahead and be out, go out to, onto the Connect page and register for these sessions ahead of time. We will take questions at the end of the session, but if you have questions along the way, go ahead and type them into the chat function, and then we will look at those and get to those at, uh, at the end of the presentation. I'm pleased to turn this over now to uh, my colleague, Angie Moran. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. So today we're gonna to be talking about meal planning and how to make it manageable. So these are some of the things I'm gonna be talking about today. So first of all, I'd like to talk just briefly about understanding the principles of healthy eating, um, recognizing some obstacles to meal planning, because once we know some of those obstacles or things that make it a little bit more challenging, we can maybe know what to focus on to make the, it a little bit easier. Um, and lastly, I'll put, we'll go over some um, strategies for efficient meal preparation and planning as well. So we all know the importance of nutrition. Um, eating well is important for everyone, um, for cancer survivors or anyone on the cancer um, continuum from diagnosis to completion of treatment. Eating a healthy diet um, can help with side effects like nausea, diarrhea, or taste changes um, during that people may experience during treatment. Um, it can also help people maintain their weight um, muscle mass, give us more energy and how we respond to treatment. So first of all, there's some foods to, that we can focus on, um, energy boosting foods. So things like um, that have protein in them. Um, there's animal and plant-based proteins. Just if we choose animal-based proteins, just making sure they're lean sources of protein like chicken, fish, um, lean cuts of beet, beef um, examples are cuts that have like loin, the, the term loin in them are a little bit leaner cuts, um, or low fat dairy um, products such as low fat yogurt, cottage cheese. And then don't forget about some of those plant-based proteins like beans, lentils, edamame are a few examples, um, tofu. Um, and then also complex carbohydrates. Um, those just carbohydrates in general, I think have gotten a bad rap, but 
complex carbohydrates, it's mostly the, the carbohydrates that we choose. And those that are complex carbohydrates give us more energy um, for muscles and our brain. Um, so some examples would be like starchy vegetables, um, uh, also include starchy vegetables like corn, potatoes, winter squash are a few of those examples. Um, whole grains are examples of also complex carbohydrates too. So I also want to talk briefly about iron. Um, patients going through treatment often have low blood red blood cell counts. Um, and this is also known as anemia. Although eating foods rich in iron may not correct red blood cell counts to normal levels, it can enhance um, red blood cell production. Um, but those patients with leukemia, iron rich foods most likely won't increase the red blood cell counts. So I just give some examples of some iron rich foods that you can include. Um, and then two, if they are, um, we don't, our body doesn't absorb plant um, sources of iron as much. So things like um, iron fortified cereals or whole grains. And I put in there that we can include foods with vitamin C. So vitamin C rich foods can help um, change the iron so that our body absorbs it better. Um, so you can include some examples might be like, you could include strawberries, which are high in vitamin C with some iron fortified cereals. So that might be a way to enhance our absorption. Also healthy fats in the in foods um, provide energy, support our cell function and absorb nutrients um, like foods um, that have fat soluble vitamins. Um, Fat, healthy fats or some examples like uh, olive oil, um, avocados have healthy fats. Uh, we just have to, and nuts and seeds are also examples, uh, peanut butter. Um, they are, if you're watching your weight, um, so you're trying to maintain a healthy weight, um, they are a little bit higher in calories. So you just have to be careful not to consume too much of those. But if you're trying to gain weight or maintain your weight, these can be a good way to um, do that by including foods that are, have those healthy fats in them. And then also making, making sure we include maintain um, good hydration by drinking fluids. Um, some side effects of treatments or medications can increase the needs of fluids. So your best choice is water. Um, and if you don't like the taste of it, you can certainly cut up fruit. Um, sometimes people put cucumbers in the water just to change up the taste. Uh, but that's a good way. And just also monitoring your hydration by just, um, it may sound silly, but when you use the restroom, just looking at your urine, if it's a light yellow color, you are um, well hydrated. So that's one way to kind of make sure you're, you're well hydrated. Then these are some principles of healthy eating. I like to see things visually just to know what my plate should look like. Um, so the goal is to work towards healthy eating pattern with this example of this uh, plate. Um, but of course we may need to adjust how our plate if we're not feeling well or struggling to get enough nutrition. So, um, you know, if things don't sound good and you're losing weight, you, you may need to rely on some of those comfort foods. So I don't say that it has to look like this all the time, um, but just typically this is, we wanna try to strive for more of a plant-based type diet. Um, so this is from the American Institute of Cancer Research. And if you go to AICR.org, um, they talk a lot about this uh, principle of, of healthy eating, um, where two thirds of the plate is made up of vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans at each meal. And a third or less of the plate is made up of animal protein. So this is just an example of that. And AICR.org does have recipes too. So I'll talk a little bit about where you can find recipes. And then Mayo Clinic has a healthy weight pyramid. Um, and then how does that pyramid translate into our, onto our plate? So this is an example of the healthy dining table on the right. Um, not that your plate has to have all these foods in them, but it just shows you how on your plate they fit. Um, so just again, it's kind of emphasizing more of that, that plant, striving to that plant-based um, diet. You don't have to be a vegetarian for any reason, um, but just limiting the amount of animal proteins um, and not forgetting about some of those plant-based proteins. And the reason too, just to kind of emphasize with more of that plant-based 
Um, diet is just, it can help you achieve and maintain a healthy weight too. So I wanted to touch on a little bit some of the obstacles to meal planning because it can seem like a, a big task if it's something we're not used to doing. So we may not be sure where to begin. How do I even start with meal planning? Um, may have financial concerns. People often think that healthy eating has to cost a lot of money. So I talk a little, I want to touch on that a little bit. Um, don't like or know how to cook. I personally don't like to do the dishes. <laughs> so sometimes that could even be a challenge. Um, but shopping, you know, grocery shopping, it takes a lot of time, especially if we're struggling with fatigue. Um, how can we do that? So I'll touch on that a little bit in a more efficient way. If we don't have a lot of time, if we're trying to work and balance treatment, um, and if we're struggling with fatigue, I'll talk about some strategies to help you be more efficient with your meal planning and preparation. And if you don't feel well too, um, how do we get through that? So, so I just wanna briefly touch on what are some of the benefits of meal planning? Cause it kind of helps us understand why I even wanna be striving for the, to do some meal planning or meal preparation. Um, so we're more likely to eat healthier foods when we have a plan. It can help us save money when we stick to our grocery list. It reduces trips to the grocery store too. So if we're struggling with fatigue, don't have a lot of time, it can really just, when we have a plan, we can stick to that and not go to the grocery store all the time or as often. We tend to eat out less um, due to COVID. We may be doing less of that, but maybe um, just getting less takeout food and bringing it home. And then it can also help reduce food waste because when we have a plan um, and, or even perhaps I'll, I'll, I, I know I will talk a little bit about doubling up on your um, a recipe. You can prepare a little bit more, even if it's just for yourself, that's okay um, because you can freeze some foods and then um, you can save that for a later time. And we, when we have a plan, we don't let foods go to waste. So obstacle one, where do we even begin? So I talk about, you know, looking I'm, with anything that I talk about with nutrition, I always talk about where are you in this journey? If you're not doing it at all, it's unrealistic to say, I'm going to plan seven days a week of my dinners. So I just say, start small. Like maybe I just want to start with a couple meals a week um, for planning. So that would be my recommendation. Um, and then looking at the week ahead, I'll show you an image in the next slide um, to just, you know, because maybe you don't need to plan as many for as many meals. If maybe you're going to go out and meet friends or if you have something on uh, one day of the week. So that's one less meal you'll have to prepare. Or if you're going over to family or friends, maybe you don't have to make something for the week. So that can just help us prepare fewer meals. And then two, if we're really struggling with fatigue, can I enlist the help of family or friends to help me with this? Um, and are there some go-to meals I already make? So it's just kind of sitting down and thinking about, are there some things that I've made in the past I haven't made in a while? I don't know if you're like me, but I kind of tend to get in a rut of making the same thing over and over, or even doing like a recipe exchange with different people that you know, or family or friends, um, to kind of give you some ideas of some new things you want to try or some easy meals too. So this slide, I don't want to make it seem like, oh my gosh, this is for, this makes me get a headache if I just look at this, but so you don't need to plan for every single meal, but this just, th this is like a talking, a starting point. So I usually ask people, what meal do you want to start planning for? Um, most often when I talk with people or I've talked with people in the past about meal planning, it's usually dinner that they struggle most with. So that's where typically we want to focus on. But um, you can certainly focus on breakfast or lunch or even um, a couple of those meals during the week. So these are just some examples of um, things that you could prepare. Um, so, and, and two, I'll also mention that there's a lot of things online um, where you can just Google like a, a meal plan. So it's similar to this grid of where you can write things in to have kind of a plan. There, um, I'm kind of pencil paper type person, um, but a lot of people like things to electronically. So I'll talk about um, other options to help you plan. So starting with that meal plan. So 
again, what, what meal do you want to start planning for? Are there some go-to meals? Maybe you will talk with some friends or family um, of some ideas of things you want to prepare. And then finding recipes. Can um, Some of these recipe um, links, you can enter ingredients that you have on a hand, and then you can find recipes based on what you have in your, in your cupboard, your pantry. Um, so these are just some examples. Now I have some of these links and I will put them on Mayo Clinic Connect afterward, kind of more like a resource list um, on some recipe website. So we don't, Mayo Clinic doesn't endorse any of these. These are just some things that I recommend um, that I've heard from patients or clients that I've worked with that really like some of these recipes. But a lot of people that I talk with don't know that Mayo Clinic has a lot of recipes on um, the internet. So if you go, if you even just search Mayo Clinic recipes, you will find a link that takes you to a lot of recipes on hand. And it will be healthy recipes, more plant-based type recipes um, that follow that Mayo Clinic healthy weight pyramid. Um, and they're categorized by serving size, they're categorized by meal, um, by uh, different, like if you want more um, vegetarian options or a grain type recipe. So they're kind of categorized in different ways. Um, there's also allrecipes.com is another website. The American Institute for Cancer Re Research that AICR has recipes on there. Skinny Taste um, has more of a Mediterranean or a plant-based type um, list of all kinds of recipes. Um, Cooking Light, if you're wanting to watch your weight. Um, and even kidseatright.org is the, um, the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. They're focused on healthy eating for kids. So if you have kids at home, how can you include um, recipes or meals that your kids would also like? And I, a trick that I often tell people too is to also get them involved in some of the meal planning. It gets them invested in um, planning it, and then they'll be most more likely to, to, to eat the meals that you prepare too, because that's often frustrating if you plan it and they don't even eat it. So um, these are some meal planning applications or apps that, um, again, Mayo Clinic doesn't endorse these. But what I did was look at reviews on, again, the Academy of Di Nutrition and Dietetics, they review different apps. What can be difficult though, is apps come and go. So I really tried to find the most up-to-date information. I will say that I personally don't use meal planning apps. I do search recipes and kind of, again, are more old school and planning things that I will prepare for the week. But I will say that this e-meals, um, I did hear from a dietitian colleague of mine that her sister uses it and loves it. But they have a lot of different features, but I will say that they often cost money. So be careful. You know, they may have like certain amount of days that are free trial, but I don't want you to get sucked in and then have to pay a fee. So just be careful of those kinds of things. Um, they can, pre they can um, prepare a grocery list along with the meal planner based on what recipes you choose. Um, a lot of these use recipes from a variety of sources, so they're not all tested by staff um, with these apps. So just um, to at least get you started, and for example, this emails too, I will mention that um, you can even send your shopping list to different grocery stores, so that can um, help you with shopping. So these are just some different features that they offer. And some people, I, I swear, everyone asks me about the app, so I wanted to be prepared and have that available for you. Um, so then once you get your plan, you look at some recipes, you kind of decide on a couple meals that you're going to prepare for the week, that is what is going to drive your grocery list. So two, if you have some go-to meals, maybe some things where you just kind of prepare um, a whole grain, you use either some canned tuna or, you know, the packets of tuna or salmon um, with some vegetables. Some of those things you can keep in your pantry. So maybe you want to keep a running list of things you always want to keep in your pantry. And um, you can restock on fresh produce. Again, if that's something that you just don't eat a whole lot of or quickly enough and it just spoils, 
You can certainly buy canned fruit, um, canned fruits. Um, that's certainly fine too. It's not going to have as much fiber, but just make sure it's packed in its own juice so you don't get a lot of added sugar with that. But then too, you can kind of have some goals on maybe a couple, you maybe you want to try one new recipe a week. Um, and then too, you can also, I mentioned some of those meal planning apps do some online grocery lists. And towards the end of my presentation, I'll touch on um, online grocery shopping too. So, so then I mentioned too, the pantry is something where you just want to make sure you have things kind of always on hand. So fruits and vegetables, you can certainly have them fresh. Um, frozen is perfectly fine if it's not packed. It doesn't have added sugars. Canned is fine. Um, it's going to be a little bit higher in sodium. So you could get a no added salt or a low sodium um, vegetables. But frozen is perfectly fine too. People often ask, have asked me in the past, is it, is it as fresh as uh, fresh fruits and vegetables? Frozen is. Because really they pick it at the peak of ripeness and then they, they freeze it called flash freezing. So it's really um, just as nutritious and only unless they add added sugar or um, a lot of extra salt. So I would say no added salt or a low salt option would be um, better or no added sugar. So for grains, having things like rice, pasta, tortillas, if you use that, bread, cereals, you can certainly, if you don't go through a whole loaf of bread, if it's just you, you can certainly freeze that. Um, but with the whole grains, focusing on 100% whole wheat or a whole wheat product, um, if your family doesn't like, for example, whole grain or whole wheat pasta, you could do a mix um, to, and kind of gradually um, change it over to a whole grain. But breads, if you don't like whole grain breads, there's whole white wheat bread, which has a texture similar to white bread. Um, that could be a good transition and family probably would notice it. Um, protein, you certainly can buy um, a low sodium canned beans or water packed tuna. Um, there's even chicken in the can. Um, as other options that you can keep in the pantry, nut and nut butters, um, and then keeping things like if you like yogurt or low fat milk or cheese, those are some other things that you could have, obviously not in your pantry, in your refrigerator. Okay, so obstacle number two, planning if you're on a budget. Um, so when you follow a meal plan, you will save money because you're, you don't have as much of those impulse purchases when you stick to your list. It also reduces the amount of time that you're in the grocery store. Um, I used to kind of quote this study and I couldn't find it, but I know that with this study, um, it says the longer amount of time over 30 minutes, you actually gradually spend more money. So if you can be efficient in the amount of time that you're in the grocery store, that will save money. Um, you can certainly use grocery store coupons or some grocery stores offer on a certain day, like a double coupon day. I know one of our gross, local grocery stores does that. Um, Plant-based proteins can be less expensive. Um, meat prices really have gone up. So um, that can be one way to save money. Buying in bulk um, can also save money, but be careful um, by comparing brands. Because sometimes when you cost out the actual unit per price, the price per unit, it actually might be um, just the same or a little bit more expensive. So just be careful um, by pricing those bulk items out. Um, if you don't like to cook um, or not sure how to cook, um, I have some strategies to help you with that, or two, if you don't have a lot of energy too. So um, tools too, I'll, talk, I'll touch on some tools that you can have in your kitchen. I mean, obviously if you don't have a lot of space in your kitchen um, or two, some of those tools can be expensive. So it's kind of prioritizing what you think um, might be helpful to you. Um, these will help with making some shortcuts. So I often like to talk about meal planning or preparation in this kind of a continuum. Um, so just thinking about enhanced prepared foods, quickly assembled meals, and then kind of full on cooking is more that meal preparation. So on the left, you're going to have more kind of um, frozen meals, not I'll, I'll talk on that all the way to that meal preparation, um, which is more heavy duty cooking. Um, but 
again, talk about some strategies to make it more efficient. So by any means, I don't recommend you only eating frozen foods um, because they can be um, a little bit higher in sodium if that's something you need to watch. Um, and two, we we they don't always offer a whole lot of fruits or vegetables, but that's why I talk about if you're really struggling to even prepare things, every once in a while adding to the mix a frozen meal can just help get a meal on the table. And then thinking, what else can I add to it to enhance the nutrition? Can I add, you know, some frozen um, heat, steam up some frozen vegetables and add that to the meal if it doesn't have vegetables? Could I add a glass of skim milk to it if I need a good source of protein or calcium to it? Um, so if you're trying to um, increase your calories, you could add a, a supplement to it. Um, that would also help increase the calories too. These are just examples of calorie range. Often when I worked with people in the past, it was more for weight loss or weight maintenance. So it doesn't have to be that calorie range, but the protein, the sodium, and the fiber are things to try to shoot for um, as a guideline. So the calories, I wouldn't worry too much unless you're trying to maintain a healthy weight, okay? And there are so many options in the frozen meal section, and some are even um, plant-based type. Um, so it's a whole lot better than it used to be. I think of when I was a kid with the TV dinners, they weren't always that healthy, but I think they're really trying to, uh, food manufacturers are trying to make them healthier. Um, but like I said, always kind of thinking, what else can I add to the meal to make it a little bit more nutritious? Then I touch on quickly assembled meals. So just thinking about some quick, uh, some things that I can have on hand to quickly assemble a meal. If you look at the example on the left, you know, there's no cooking with this. You're, you're using uh, canned chickpeas, you're adding some fresh um, tomatoes to it, spinach and avocado, um, or you could add a, a grain to it to add a, a, a healthy bowl. So. I often, I think I talked about this in my last nutrition webinar, but just, I often see in the, the frozen meals, like those bowls, those healthy bowls. Um, but that's really something that you can make um, where you can make yourself. You could prepare a little bit more of um, like a quick uh, whole grain um, rice and then you could make a little bit more of it. And then you could add some chickpeas to it, some tuna to it, and some vegetables um, or some canned chicken to it. So you can prepare your own um, healthy bowl where that's just some things that you could use from your pantry and quickly assemble things. Um, but then too, you can um, also do things, you don't always have to have a traditional dinner if, if we're focused on dinners, you could certainly have breakfast for dinner is something um, that you could certainly do um, as well. So we just don't want it to make it complicated um, and just keep it simple. And then um, all, some other things to have on hand that can make it a meal quick assembly. Um, so some things that are kind of semi-prepared foods, like having, um, and you could call them processed, although they're chopped lettuce, um, um, grated cheese. You could certainly have a rotisserie chicken and do a chicken fajita or a chicken stir fry, where you can just take pieces of that rotisserie chicken, um, have some frozen vegetables in it, um, use some salsa, and you could even use a frozen pepper and onion vegetable mix to make that chicken fajita and some um, tortillas. That's certainly something to kind of make things quick and easy. So again, this could be something that could be one of your go-to meals. And then kind of then switching over to that meal preparation. So we're kind of at the end of that continuum where you're gonna prepare a meal. Um, so this is kind of where you prep your in ingredients ahead of time. You can often pre-chop things, pre-measure things for, um, for different recipes. You could pre-cook um, 
different meats, um, brown some meat and use it in several recipes and also cross utilize ingredients to make several recipes at one time. Um, often too, I talk about if you already, if, if you have the energy um, or have a certain time um, on the weekend where you have a little bit more time where you could pre-chop things. So for example, if you have peppers and you're gonna use some peppers and chili, and you're gonna also use it in fajitas. You could certainly dice the peppers for your chili if you put peppers in your chili, but you could then chop them into slices for your uh, fajitas. So you already are pre-chopping those things for several meals. It's just kind of a different way of thinking about how you can work ahead, get ahead for the week. Um, and have things ready to go. So essentially you're just assembling them and heating them or cooking them when you get home. So this is an example of cross utilizing ingredients. So for example, peppers, I kind of mentioned this, what things can I use peppers for? So I could use it for a frittata to get, um, which is like an egg bake. Um, so you could use peppers in the morning with your eggs. You could use peppers for chili. Um, peppers for fajitas, or if you want to make a pita pizza, so you use the pita as your crust and use like a, a sauce for your pizza um, sauce. And then you could put peppers on it or onions. You could saute those ahead of time and then put them on top of the pizza and bake it. So these are four different things that you could use peppers in, um, but it's just a matter of getting the cutting board out with a nice sharp knife, cutting them ahead of time, and you're, and you're just assembling for the week. Um, eggs, what all could I use eggs for? So again, kind of thinking of a head for the week, I could scramble them up for breakfast in the morning. I could use um, an egg muffin. So essentially like if you use scrambled, scrambled eggs, you could put peppers in it and put them in a muffin tin and bake them with a little cheese on top. You could hard boil eggs for a snack during the day um, to get a little bit of protein in there, or you could make egg salad. Um, during the week too for lunch or take it to work. So these are just some examples of all the different ways that you could use eggs for several different meals throughout the day or throughout the, throughout the week. You might get sick of eggs if you have all of those in one day. <laughs> then how can I cross utilize ingredients like oats? So some recipes use oats and meatloaf. Um, there's a recipe on mayoclinic.org or many different recipe websites of overnight oats where you just put um, oats in a container with some yogurt, um, a little bit of milk with it or um, almond milk. Sometimes people use that um, with some chia seeds. So, and you can put fruit in it and different like cinnamon in it. Um, so just to kind of, you just put it in the refrigerator overnight and then it becomes a nice kind of oatmeal in the morning. You just let it sit. That's all you do is just mix the ingredients and let it go. And you could even put frozen fruit in it and it thaws overnight. Um, I've seen it, you know, that's a nice thing to have where it's cold in the summertime, but you could certainly heat it if you like um, more warm type breakfast in the winter time. I'm just thinking here in Minnesota, it gets so cold in the morning. Uh, but you could use oats in a banana oat muffin, or you could prepare the oats as oatmeal. Or there's even oatmeal bakes recipes that you can use oats as well. I use this too as a meal preparation efficiency to just kind of think of two different recipes and these kind of going line by line on the ingredients. So, so vegetable lasagna, a vegetable pizza. They both use tomato sauce. Make sure I have enough of that. If I'm chopping up these vegetables, I can just make sure I have enough for my vegetable lasagna and enough for my vegetable pizza. Um, you could use frozen spinach in both, mozzarella. So the only difference is you'd need ricotta for that vegetable lasagna. Um, you would need a whole wheat crust for your vegetable pizza. You can buy that, um, just the crust in the grocery aisle. I've seen them as dough in the refrigerator section, I've seen them even frozen. So there's many different ways that you could get the crust. Um, and then you would just need whole wheat noodles or just noodles um, for your vegetable lasagna. But you see all the different ingredients, they have quite a few that are the same. So you could certainly spread it out. So you do the lasagna maybe at the beginning of the week, um, 
maybe on a Sunday, you could have it leftovers, you know, two, um, a couple times during the week or for lunch, you could bring the lasagna and then maybe you have the vegetable pizza kind of towards the middle or the end of the week. So you're not eating them back to back the same kind of Italian type fare. Then I just wanted to touch on two of some tools and strategies that can make us a little bit more efficient with meal planning and preparation. So I talked about a cutting board and using a large cutting board. I often, um, I used to have these small cutting boards and it was like just trying to, um, you know, not having enough space on them. And then I went and worked in one area um, here at Mayo Clinic where we had a kitchen and we had these big, large cutting boards. It just made it so nice um, to be able to chop and have, you know, like I said, the peppers in different places on the cutting board. This is for my fajitas. This is for my stir fry. So just being able to cut those and put them in different spots on my cutting board. Having a sharp knife, it shouldn't, it sounds silly, but um, it just makes us more efficient. When we have a sharp knife, we can cut things efficiently. Um, and it also enhances the quality of things that you're chopping. So if, if you kind of don't have a sharp knife, it just um, doesn't do a clean cut. And then it just can make our vegetables just a little bit um, not as crisp having storage containers so you can store things in them. So having nice um, containers and labeling them and dating them so you make sure they don't go to waste and it has a purpose. Um, having things like a crock pot, pressure cooker, or even a grill at your disposal too can just help with having things um, where you just can assemble and let the tool cook it for you and not have to worry too much about it you know, and you don't necessarily need to have all these things. So if there are things that maybe you want to ask for your birthday or something like that from friends and family, um, that's just can help you be a little bit more efficient um, in the kitchen. And then some strategies like thinking about making double batches, freezing extras, some things freeze a little bit better than others. So thinking about what kinds of things might be better, like stews or soup store uh, or freeze really nicely. Um, things with dairy don't really freeze really well. Um, so it just kind of depends on what it is that you're preparing. Um, prep ahead. You could certainly do meal exchanges with friends or family. Um, and again, that just takes the pressure off of you of always having to think of different meals, but helping each other out too. Now, if you don't like to shop, um, there are certainly, you can do online grocery shopping. So you can shop in the comfort of your own home. Everybody feels a little bit differently about technology. So maybe this isn't something you necessarily want to do, but maybe family or friends can help you kind of get started with that um, and setting up, doing the grocery shopping um, on your computer. Because too, when you do online grocery shopping, it kind of creates your grocery list um, so maybe there's certain stores that you get certain things, um, more staple type items. So that would just stay on your grocery list. And then when you go back, it's just real easy to just order it again. And all you have to do is drive up, pull into the parking spot, and they bring it out to your car, which is so nice. Um, so it really can, if grocery shopping is that obstacle, this can really help you um, get over that. Um, less time you spend in the aisles means less money spent, less impulse purchases. Um, and like I said, it has that purchase history. You can also track your spending too, which can really help you pinpoint if there are areas that maybe you're spending a little bit more. Um, you can also see if there's if food prices are going up. Maybe you want to find alternatives on things that might be a little bit less expensive. Or even too, sometimes I've seen where um, different grocery stores kind of advertise things that are on sale. So it might help you pinpoint things that are on sale and help you save money. Then I wanted to touch on meal kits a little bit. So there's two options with this, with meal kits. There's the home delivered kits. And then I've seen at grocery stores, there's grocery store kits. Um, the home delivered kits can be quite expensive. Um, you do, you know, again, some of them allow you like so many times you can, like you can get one or two free deliveries to just try it out and then you can subscribe to it. 
Um, but some people really like it because it gives them those recipes that they, some are really nice laminated recipes. It would be awesome if they also sent somebody in the box to make it for you, but they do not. You still need to make it yourself. Um, but again, it's it, over, you overcome that option of having to go to the grocery store. So if that's something that you just do not like, this could be something. And, and if cost isn't a barrier, you could certainly do that. Um, and then it, it only sends you the ingredients that are specifically for that recipe. So it can save money and limit. Um, you don't get as many leftovers. Um, but like I said, into it requires a subscription often. Um, or all of them require a subscription. So some can be quite costly. One thing I would say too, is that the ingredients come in a box. And I was surprised at how much, um, just much packaging was in it. So, um, that really kind of turned me off on how much packaging, but it makes sense. Obviously you need to do that to keep the ingredients fre uh, fresh and, um, not to spoil. Um, so just wanted to mention that. And then there are grocery store kind of kits, same type of um, kit, but they're in your grocery store. So you, it has all the ingredients that you need for a meal in one location. Um, so you just go to that location and it will in the grocery store and it will have all the ingredients that you need, for example, of a, a stew or something like that. So you just take it and it's all packaged and you purchase it. And you obviously don't have to subscribe um, and you can just go to some of those go to um, grocery store kits for ideas that can help too when you're in a pinch. If they have something that sounds good, you could always buy those. This um, is kind of towards the end of the presentation where I just kind of go through some kind of go to meal ideas ideas for different um, meals, whether that's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Um, and I could certainly, if, if you'd like, put some of these on connect to after if you want some of these ideas. So these are some quick go-to breakfast ideas. You could certainly do yogurt, granola, and fruit. Um, you could even make your own granola if you want to cut back on the amount of sugar. There's some brands that um, are lower cal calorie and lower sugar options of granola. You could certainly buy fresh fruit or uh, frozen fruit too is another option. That overnight refrigerator oatmeal, you could do um, a whole grain cereal, milk with fruit on top, eggs in that muffin tin, um, whole grain bread with peanut butter and a piece of fruit on the side. Um, even like a whole grain um, waffle and you could put peanut butter on it and slice some bananas on it. And there you go, you've got breakfast. So kind of some go-to lunch or dinner ideas. Um, the chicken quesadillas I mentioned, um, pita pocket sandwiches with tuna salad. Again, something that has whole grain pita, a whole grain option with a good protein source of tuna. Um, you could certainly put lettuce in it, tomatoes to also add some vegetables. Um, Southwest rice and beans. So again, you're going to have a protein packed meal with um, a nice grain. You could add uh, some vegetables to it. Baked potato topped with chili um, is another option with some cheese. Um, shrimp and veggie stir fry over brown rice and pasta and chicken with a marinara sauce, which is gonna have some vegetables in there. And two, you could certainly like with different stews or chilies, um, you could always, or a marinara sauce, you could always put frozen vegetables at the end. All they need to do is just defrost, right? And then you automatically have some vegetables added to it. And then here are some go-to snack ideas. If you're, if you're wanting to maintain your weight or need to gain a little bit of weight, um, some low fat cottage cheese with some fruit, whole wheat crackers with hummus, um, the homemade cereal trail mix, a fruit smoothie with Greek yogurt, or a whole grain muffin with nuts. So these are some examples. So to just in summary, um, there are some meal planning takeaways. So like I mentioned in the beginning, just really recognizing some of these obstacles that we have, whether it's for meal planning or meal preparation, um, and then using some strategies tailored to your individual needs to help you be a little bit more efficient with whether that's the meal planning or the meal preparation. So having a plan can help us save money, just be more um, 
efficient, knowing um, what we're going to need to prepare, um, having using that continuum to think of where am I at with my treatment? Am I really struggling with fatigue? Do I need to rely on some of those frozen meals and have some things on hand that I can enhance the nutrition? Um, and can I have some tools um, that in my, in my kitchen to help me prepare meals um, a little bit more efficiently and I don't have to do as much um, to just help me save time, effort, and money with all of these different things that I talked about. So, so at this time, um, I'll stop sharing uh, my presentation, um, but at this time I can take questions if people have questions. Yes, there were a few questions, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for that great presentation. It was really wonderful and so full of great ideas, and I learned so many great tips. So thank you really so much. Oh, good. So we have a few questions here. Let me run through some. So <clears throat> uh, suggestions for cooking for one, so not wasting mm -hmm. food. Yeah, so no, I totally hear you on this. Um, we just had our son go to college. So I'm used to making lots of food. And whenever you have someone that, you know, if, if you've less people, you always have to kind of adjust. Um, so what I always say, and I worked with a chef too, and we always uh, stress this was that even if it's just for yourself, that's okay. Be make a little bit extra because you can always freeze it. And that helps you um, kind of have some of those go-to. Then you have your own frozen meals, right? <laughs> you don't have to buy them at the grocery store. So um, I wouldn't, you know, you could certainly find recipes for two. And there are some on Mayo Clinic. Um, if you search Mayo Clinic and he healthy recipes or just recipes, they do serve do a serves two. Um, but even for four, that's fine too. You don't have to eat it, you know, all the days of the week that gets too much. So you could certainly freeze it and have it available. So, um, so I don't really say to only cook for one. I say, that's okay. Just make a little bit extra because you could always, um, freeze a little or save it for later. Yeah. Or okay. For and lunch. that leads to this person saying quite a, yeah. a question and you yeah. did touch on it a bit in terms of wondering about foods that really do freeze better than others because some leftovers just don't freeze well she said so. yeah no I agree so more of those I would say like soups freeze really well the stews freeze well um, it's when you have um, more dairy you know sometimes when they thaw it kind of separates out a little bit um, so you may struggle with that a little bit um, so yeah, it's just, um, that would be my recommendation. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, and then a couple of recommendations when you were sharing some of your yeah. apps and go to, um, places, uh, a couple of people have shared a few things. One is myfridgefood.com lets you put input, what food you have in the house, and it will give you recipes for the ingredients that you have on hand in a pinch. So that's kind of interesting. Have, have you heard of that? I haven't. That's why I was actually, I'm glad this person put that in the chat because I was going to actually mention if people have ideas on things that they've used, um, I welcome that. But I, that's why even some of those recipe suggestions, a lot of, and not even the ones that I necessarily put in there, but a lot of recipes, um, uh, searching type websites, you can put in what things you have on hand. It's so nice because then that really decreases the waste of foods. If you can find recipes that'll just utilize things you have on hand. So thank you for that. Yeah. Right. And another person suggested an app that she loves. It's called, oh. I think it's a she, sorry. Um, uh, Ibotta app, hmm. and these are in the chat, so you can okay. see I, Ibotta that will um, give you a rebate on a number of items, and, and they pointed out that they've saved a lot of money oh, on wow. that over yeah. time, and then I had a question about, um, so you had mentioned uh, some beans will contain iron, because I know iron for a lot of people is hard to get your body to absorb it, and taking some of those yeah. iron pills is hard to, on your yes. stomach also, yep. but those beans, you said some beans um, contain more iron, and do you know which ones yeah. those are? So more white beans are going to have um, more iron in them, but really any type of bean, but 
um, like chickpeas do have a little bit in them too. But if you pair it with something that has the vitamin C in them, you will absorb it better. So for example, um, like if you are, I make like a chickpea salad. So I put peppers in it and peppers have quite a bit of vitamin C in it. Um, and even using um, some lemon juice too in it will also help um, you absorb it. So oh. yeah, it's just not our body doesn't absorb it as well. Even if you have meat too, you could certainly add a vitamin C source that helps you absorb it. And there are some supplements out there that do have vitamin C with the iron. Mm. It doesn't have as much iron in it. But but I what I will say, though, is I would rather have people eat foods that have iron in it than to take a supplement. So don't take a supplement unless you check with your doctor or you're deficient in it. So I will say that because we always promote getting your, um, your vitamins and minerals from foods first. So, um, because some of those can interfere with different treatment medications. So that's always something to talk about with your yeah. care team. Yeah. That's a good point. Thank you. Um, a person was asking if they, if you could share the PowerPoint because she missed a lot of the presentation, but what you missed, I guess, is that uh, we actually are recording this session. And so if you give us just a few days, it gets turned around and edited, and then it's put on the Mayo Clinic Connect um, Cancer Education page under the tab called video, uh, video libraries. And I did include that on the chat earlier up on the beginning of the chat. So if you could want to see that address, you can surely do that. Another person mentioned that allrecipes.com mm -hmm. allows you to search for recipes by ingredients also. Yep. That's why I had that one on there. No, I like that one too. Yeah, yep. that's great. Pre-COVID, um, a person mentioned that they like grocery stores that did the meal prep classes like oh, Heidi yeah. in Rochester. Yep. And then she would go home with meals already ready for the freezer. So hopefully that they'll have more places like that. And there are some places that do that. Um, I know Catering by Design in Rochester, Minnesota has some meals that you can buy or portions of meals that you can buy ahead. Um, and then I was wondering, you know, sometimes when you are going out to eat or if you're maybe in a town where you're needing to be to get to treatments such as radiation for a period of time it's hard to get go out to eat and it seems like so much of the food even when you try to have healthy options has so much like salt in it or yes a fat is do you have any suggestions for um eating out healthily yeah that could be a whole other webinar <laughs> sorry <laughs> no 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 um no that's true but really just trying to often it's and this, this can be hard to do. So if you can try to find things that have more vegetables in them, that, you know, often sauces on them are gonna add a lot of extra fat, um, but finding things that have more vegetables in them. Um, so for example, if you're at an Italian restaurant, can you find something like a shrimp scampi that maybe you can get vegetables on the side um, and, you know, or a, a a marinara that has vegetables with it. Um, so whenever you can, those vegetables just take up more space and they're less calories just overall. Um, but to, yeah, that can be really tricky if you have to kind of dine out because you're, you just have to, you don't, you're in treatment and you don't have things, um, you don't have a, access to a kitchen. So um, it's more the sauces, the cream sauces, are going to add a lot of extra calories and salt. Um, and let's face it, you know, things taste good that have more fat in them, more yeah. um, uh, salt in them. So that's typically what they end up doing, which is really frustrating. But some restaurants, um, you know, do have like a lower calorie menu, that could be something or you could certainly sp if split a meal, you could always ask how big it is, you could split the meal with somebody that you're with. Um, so that's another option too, um, that you can do, or even get an appetizer if it has, you know, different options of, of more vegetables, um, you could do that as well. So yeah, it can, that could be really challenging. You know, if you have access to getting to maybe a grocery store and getting some easy things that you could keep in your hotel, 
Um, mm -hmm. If it has a refrigerator, you know, maybe you just then need to only eat out at dinner time. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. Yeah, it can be challenging, but that that isn't, like I said, another webinar in itself. That's a oh, good okay. question. <laughs> that actually would be an interesting webinar. I think. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, uh, other comments are just uh, saying thank you for this. Yeah. Uh, that was great. So oh, good. I think that's it for the questions that I've seen. Yeah, I think that's all I saw too. Yeah. All oh, right. Good. Well, I think that's it. So thank you again. And yeah. Um, just a reminder, we do record these and in, a, in just a few days, early next week, we should have this on our, our education video tab for you to, to watch again. So thank you again. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.